Okay, let's get started. Uh, thank you again to all of you who are joining us today. My name is Trixie Cordova, and I am the Associate Director of Student Services for Diversity Abroad. And thank you all again for joining us for today's webinar on leveraging study abroad for grad school admissions. Um, before we get started, I do want to go over a few housekeeping items um, in case many of you are joining us for the first time and or using GoToWebinar for the first time. So today's uh, webinar is being recorded. So if you have to step away for a mi minute or if uh, the sound cuts off for any reason, um, you'll definitely receive a recording of today's webinar so you can come back and listen to it at any time. Um, and this is an interactive tool. So although those of you joining us are in listen-only mode, you do have the ability to respond to any questions we have. Um, so you can feel free to type in those comments. And you can also raise your hand virtually. So you all have a little hand icon next to your names. Um, and you can see that you're welcome to raise your hand if we ever ask a question um, in, in, uh, during the, the presentation at any time. Um, so with that, let's get started. Uh, here's a quick look at today's agenda. Um, we're going to get started by introducing you all to all of our amazing co-presenters today. We're really, really excited to have uh, some incredible people here to tell you a little bit more on graduate school admissions. Um, and then we'll launch into the different topic areas. So we'll talk a little bit about benefits of graduate school. Hopefully, if you are tuning in, it is already on your radar, if not something that you are maybe planning to do in the future. Um, and so hopefully understanding what those benefits are will help you make that decision. We'll talk more as well about the skills that you possess as hopefully study abroad participants already. Um, so what really um, are you learning in a global experience that makes you a strong candidate for graduate school? And then we'll talk more specifically about the applications themselves. How do you stand out as an applicant um, and what are the best tools to kind of give you a, a great um, benefit and, and advantage to others um, in similar um, Places. So we'll wrap up with some next steps and other resources to pass along, um, and then of course have questions at the end. And so as I mentioned, you're welcome to type in questions at any time, but we'll certainly try to have some dedicated space for that um, before we wrap up. So again, I'm Trixie. Um, you've heard a little bit about me, and I'll talk more specifically about diversity abroad. Um, in a little bit, but I work in our student services resources, uh, which means that anything from our scholarships to webinars such as these, our online resources on diversityabroad.com are things that I have a hand in um, overseeing. So if this is your first time tuning in and joining us uh, for an event, we thank you for being here, and I'm happy to address any questions you have about diversity abroad um, as we wrap up but I am wanting to pass it along to my co-presenters. So Becca, I can start with you, and then everyone can just kind of present, um, introduce themselves to our audiences. Hi, everyone. My name is Rebecca Coughlin, and I am um, with the School of International Service. I work in the grad admissions team, um, and I also direct the diversity and inclusion initiatives for SIS here, um, which includes uh, managing an event series called Exploring Identities um, and doing some programming for students once they're here on campus to look at diversity, not just in our community, but in the context of the field of international affairs as well. So I also happen to be an alum of one of our programs. I'm a graduate from the International Peace and Conflict Resolution Program um, and actually did that program while working full time here at the school. So if at the end there are questions from um, our own pathways, I'm happy to answer those as well. And let me pass it on to my colleague, Amy, to introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Amy Marion. Um, I work in the School of International Service at American University alongside uh, Becca Coughlin. And um, my role at SIS, I'm an International Programs Manager. Um, so I manage a variety of uh, graduate level study abroad programs. Um, so I'm sure many of you have studied abroad, which is why you're here. So um, I manage semester abroad programs and short term experiential programs as well, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, and I'll pass it on to Carmen. Hi everyone, this is Carmen Mazera. I'm the Executive Director 
of the Association of Professional Schools of International Affairs. We'll talk a little bit more in a bit about what APSIA is and does, but I'm delighted to be part of this conversation. We represent a number of grad schools and the School of International Service is one of our founders. So it's wonderful to be here with you and with them. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen, and thank you everyone uh, for all of your introductions. So let's get started. Um, just to give you a little bit more background about us as your presenters, um, obviously this is a diversity abroad webinar, um, and so I'll give a little bit of information about our organization. But I'm curious, uh, among those of you who are joining us today, if you could raise your hand if this is your first diversity abroad webinar, um, if you're completely new to our organization, um, I'd love if you raise your hand just so I know if there's anybody new joining us for today. Oh, looks like everyone is um, familiar with our organization, so that's great. Um, I'll just give a brief update then on, on who we are and the kinds of resources that we develop um, and have available to students. This is the homepage of our student website, diversityabroad.com. Um, so as I mentioned previously, um, any of the resources on this website, including country guides, articles, um, program opportunities uh, for to go abroad, scholarships, events, um, all of those you can access from our website. But we also have a really strong social media presence. So if you are tuning in and um, you, you don't already, we'd love if you followed us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. We share all kinds of updates about um, upcoming opportunities to learn more about the, the offerings that we have. Um, in addition to our student resources, however, we also have a consortium of about 230 plus institutions um, that are part of our diversity abroad network. And that's essentially, um, you know, as we create resources for students who are interested in studying abroad and perhaps have never pursued opportunities like that before, or don't have friends and family who are familiar with that process, we too have resources for professionals in the field who want to be uh, more inclusive in how they support you as you pursue these opportunities. So there's a good chance that your school is a member um, of our consortium. Um, and we're really excited to continue to grow in how we support both students and professionals to diversify global experiences. So it's a little bit about us. Uh, I'm now going to pass it back to Rebecca to tell you a little bit more about the School of International Service. Great. Thanks, Trixie. Um, so our school, School of International Service, is part of American University, and we're located in Washington, D.C., in the heart of Embassy Row. So um, a great place to be if you're interested in studying international affairs, of course. Um, we're actually celebrating our 60th anniversary uh, this year, so we got founded in 1957. Um, and the story of that is somewhat relevant to uh, why you might want to study at SIS. So um, President Eisenhower felt in 1957 at the height of the Cold War after two world wars that there should be a school in the nation's capital that would teach people how to wage peace. And so um, we got our founding on the cusp of that call and um, celebrate a strong connection to President Eisenhower's legacy and um, 60 years of a community of people who are dedicated to public service in the broadest sense of that word. Um, so I can give you a little bit of a snapshot um, of the school in the next slide that gives you an idea of um, some of the things about us in a really brief uh, snapshot here. Um, so we're a top 10 school of international affairs. Um, we're one of the largest schools of international affairs uh, in the country. You can see there um, some interesting statistics that might help you get a sense of our community. Um, but overall, I want to emphasize that um, what we hear over and over from our students is that there is a strong feel of community, kind of a collaborative community um, here. And that is often something that tends to bring students to us. So the DC world can be quite competitive and um, students who are looking for a supportive environment um, where they're not necessarily feeling like they're competing against their colleagues, um, but they're collaborating both with, with their fellow students and with the faculty uh, tend to be interested in SIS. So um, this gives you an idea of us overall um, 
in terms of our student population and um, our size and that sort of thing. And I just throw these couple of numbers up here to give you a quick overview. There are lots of schools in the APSIA consortium and um, you know a, around uh, the country and the world where you can study uh, for graduate school um, and in international affairs. And one of the challenges in the early stages of thinking about grad school can be how to compare them and how to figure out what is a school that is the right fit for you. So I'm happy to follow up on any of these things, but um, hoping that it's a quick idea of who we are. And then the other thing that could be relevant to you as you're starting to think about grad school is the programs that we offer. And one of the things that makes SIS unique um, is the number of master's programs we offer. That can be a blessing and a curse for some people at this stage of the game of just starting to look at graduate schools. Um, but um, myself and my team, part of what we see as our role is to help you try to navigate all of these programs and figure out which is the one that's really the best fit for you, that gets you excited about grad school, about getting to pursue your interests and prepare for a professional career you're really um, looking forward to. So I've just put all the names of the different degrees here so you can get a quick idea. Um, some of them maybe are more clear to you than others by title, um, but of course at the end of this or if you're interested in learning more about SIS master's programs, we're all very happy to talk you through um, how your particular academic interests or professional goals might fit with any one of these programs. Um, but it is an opportunity to really kind of dive into a particular area or particular skill set of the field of international affairs, um, which is a very, very broad umbrella. The other thing to know um, is that the school is very interdisciplinary, um, as the field is in general. Um, but as you compare programs, something to think about is where the faculty are coming from. And so on the Previous slide, there's a, a note there of 120 plus full-time faculty here, and they all actually are housed in the School of International Service, though they come from uh, a range of different disciplines, government, economics, sociology, psychology, um, anthropology, but they're bringing that lens to bear on their teaching here and their work with students, and they're fully available to students in SIS rather than being shared with one of those single discipline type of departments. So something to know about, and again, goes along with the feel of community that I think we have at the school where the faculty are very accessible and um, engaged with students, both inside and outside of the classroom. Uh, so with that being said, let me um, turn things over to Carmen so she can give you a better idea of APSIA. Thanks, Becca. As was mentioned, I am with the Association of Professional Schools of International Affairs. And as you'll see on the next slide, what we aim to be is a resource for the community of graduate schools around the world that specialize in teaching international affairs. So we bring together 37 member schools. As I mentioned, SIS is one of our founders, but now we have members in Asia, Europe, North America, across the board. We also engage with 30 affiliate schools in other places, and our work is really to help strengthen them and make them better schools of international affairs through events, conferences, information sharing, and lots of other resources. But as a complement to that, we often work with students, we work with employers, we work with anyone who's trying to find great graduate programs and help provide some resources about what kinds of opportunities exist, how one can find fellowships or scholarship opportunities to pay for graduate school. We share job and internship postings on a regular basis. We also have lots of different in-person events where you can start to build a rapport and a relationship with graduate schools so that as you go through the process, when you have particular questions or you're unsure about how to navigate something, you've already started to build that relationship and can reach out and say, Becca, you might remember me. I was part of the APSIA online graduate school fair a few weeks ago. We talked about this, but I'm really not sure how to frame this aspect of my personal background or my professional work to make it appealing to a school like yours. So through APSIA, again, we try to provide really a clearinghouse of opportunities and information to help you find the right graduate program that makes sense for you and to help you understand 
what you can do with the training that an APSIA degree provides. So as you visit APSIA.org, and you can see it there on your screen, we have lots of different resources. But as Trixie mentioned, we also post a number of things through different social media channels. So I invite you to find us there as well, where we will share events, fellowships, and, and other opportunities to really help you build out that portfolio and be more competitive for graduate programs. So as we think about graduate school, study abroad, and being competitive in the process, we wanted to begin with the basic questions about why you should think about going to graduate school and what some of the benefits can be. And so with that, <coughs> excuse me, I really think that there can be five main reasons or five main benefits as to why you would perhaps want to think about gra a graduate program. And some of them have external aspects and some of them have personal aspects. I think on an external level, graduate school can be a critical piece of professional growth for you. It may constitute a career change if you've been in one field and want to move into another. It could be the kind of opportunity that you need in order to springboard into the future of your career. So as you look at job descriptions, as you look at different aspects, you may start to see that without that graduate program, your opportunities are much narrower than with it. So you may need a, a graduate program to grow professionally. And we also know that it's a key piece in terms of capturing a higher salary. I think the US Census uh, predicts that it's about $13,000 more for candidates with a graduate degree on, on average in their salary than students with a bachelor's degree. So for your long-term professional opportunities, a grad program is often that critical step to capture a higher income, move into a new sector, or just grow in your professional field. And more and more, it's not becoming necessarily a, a nice to have opportunity. It's becoming critical if you wanna compete for the way that jobs are moving. Our colleagues at DevEx noted that about 79% of the people in the professional international development space figure that within 10 years, if you don't have a graduate degree, you might be closed out from a lot of the, the jobs of the future. So it's becoming that, that key piece that students and candidates need to have in order to compete for the opportunities that are out there. So as you think about your professional trajectory, understanding when the right time to go to graduate school to build out that professional experience can be an important part of your planning for a long-term future. And we can talk more about that in the Q&A if you like, how you decide when to go and how you know when that right opportunity is for you. Even aside from those professional credentials, the benefits to graduate school can also be very personal. There may be something that you want to master. It is a master's degree for a reason. And it might be because there's an issue you really want to explore in depth that will help set you apart from other candidates. It might be because you look at all of the, the problems and the challenges in the world and you want to figure out your particular niche in solving them or in addressing them. So with that in-depth knowledge that a professional master's degree can provide, you have the depth of understanding and experience to start to unpack those big, complex, nuanced challenges that, that we face in the world today. And that's also a key part of growing and, and changing as a person. The education that you have as an undergraduate can help open the world to you in so many ways. And I know that I'm sure that's something that we'll talk about, particularly the role of study abroad in that opening process. But graduate school takes that really to a new level and can help you grow and understand a particular issue in so many more nuanced ways than you just have the ability to do as an undergrad. So the opportunity to go to graduate school to expand your professional knowledge in a field and your personal depth and, and mastery of a subject can really be ways that benefit you professionally and on paper and for your career, but also really personally as you understand your place in the world and in navigating different challenges. And I'm sure that all of you who studied abroad as I did know what a critical piece study abroad was in changing your perception and about your place in the world and the wonderful and weird and wacky aspects that, that go along with it. And so with that, I'll turn the floor back over to Trixie and let her talk with you about how you can use that experience to look at graduate school and all of those different opportunities. Thank you, Carmen. Um, before we get started on the transferable study abroad skills, I, I also want to make sure you know that our listeners understand graduate school 
is it includes all kinds of fields, right? So international affairs and international education is certainly a large focus of today's conversation. But graduate school also means uh, preparing for law school, business school, medical school. Um, There are so many other ways to, as Carmen said, master something that you're really extremely interested in and making a contribution to. Um, And so I did just want to Make a take a moment to to mention that um, a lot of the the skills that we'll talk about um, in the next slide are really a, a chance for you to think about what are some of the skills that you perhaps already possess and just honed in on um, as you went abroad. Whether that was to study, maybe you volunteered while you were abroad, maybe you did an internship or you did a fellowship and research. Um, so there are all kinds of wonderful transferable skills from that experience that you had overseas that make you stronger candidates as graduate school applicants. And so this is just a short list that we've come up with. Um, And as I go through them, I encourage you to uh, chat with us and tell us if there's another skill that you feel like um, having been abroad has has given you um, um, if it's not already on this list. And so when we talk about what are the kinds of skills um, that you've gained when you're abroad, Um, Obviously, the first that comes up for many students is the ability to communicate with people from different cultures. Um, In regardless of what field you're going to pursue, it's inevitable that you're going to be working alongside people from a lot of different backgrounds. Um, And the ability to to communicate with people from different cultures that speak different languages says a lot about about you and, and of course having had experiences overseas is a great way to sort of showcase that. Um, related to that, by going overseas, you exhibit an ability to be flexible and a willingness to adapt to new environments. Um, recently, the Institute for International Education released their latest Open Doors report. Um, and if you're not familiar with the Open Doors report, it's essentially a large survey of the the state of study abroad in the United States. Um, And in in the Open Doors report, they found that only one in 10 um, undergraduates in the U.S. have a study abroad experience or some kind of global experience, right? And so to be one of those uh, few students who have a global experience, um, that really enhances your profile and you really stand out. And so the adaptability and your willingness to to be in new places um, is something that not a lot of people do. And so you're one of the few people um, who are able to do that and able to navigate multiple cultures, um, which is which says a lot about your character. Um, creative problem solving. Um, if you are taking courses in another country where they um, they solve math problems differently, or you have to even just navigate yourself from the airport to your dorm where you're staying or your homestay. You're constantly challenging yourself to think um, differently and, and try to figure out ways to, to work around problems that you're encountering that maybe you wouldn't necessarily have to challenge yourself to think about when you're at home in some place that's very familiar to you. So that's also another skill that is really, really valued um, in, in when you're looking at graduate school admissions. Um, tied to that, of course, is critical thinking skills. Um, particularly for students, um, if perhaps you are focused more on sort of like fields that are very, very hands-on, um, maybe you're not as used to having multiple conversations um, that are sort of challenge you to think and rethink about the ways you see yourself, about um, the way the world sees you, and being pushed and rechallenged um, to 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 reevaluate essentially what you think and why you think it and where those thoughts came from. And so critical thinking skills are something that are very, very um, useful to have in life, generally speaking. And I think for graduate school, again, that makes them um, for a more compelling applicant when you're looking um, at opportunities that are next for you. Um, You're also far more independent, right? But at the same time, ability, you're able to be a team player. And so I know for me personally, um, there was a certain fear that I had in being that person who had to get on a plane by myself without my parents. And that was the first time I did that. And there was a lot of fear and and I was excited at the same time. Um, And that level of independence is not something a lot of people really push themselves to achieve. Um, And so really embrace that fact. Um, 
And embrace also the fact that by going overseas and being among people who perhaps you don't even go to school with regularly, or you are the only American student perhaps enrolled at an institution overseas, um, it, it showcases your ability to be a team player as well and to work alongside people from, from um, different backgrounds. Um, additionally, as I mentioned, Previously, you, your ability to work and be sensitive to people of these different backgrounds is is so critical. Um, I know a lot of these sound like they're overlapping, but they're all in their own distinct ways, unique skill sets, right? And so when you're interested in pursuing graduate degrees, um, you're going to have to work alongside people um, from different backgrounds that speak different languages, that solve problems in different ways. And again, having had a global experiences are a great way to illustrate that you are able to have conversations respectfully with tact um, and to be sensitive to other people as they learn, as you learn to sort of collaborate with them in different ways. Um, global competence and political awareness is also huge. And again, no matter which field that you're in, being able to showcase that you're more familiar with with things that are going on in the world and how that might shape your everyday life, the politics that are impacting um, you and your peers or your community, I think says a lot. Um, and of course, finally, increased self-confidence. So as I, as I said, for me, as somebody that was a first time study abroad participant as an undergrad, be, there was a lot of nervousness and um, at the same time, excitement. And I came back from that experience, however, so much more confident about my ability to navigate the world, my ability to be independent, my ability to uh, be confident in even the way that I view the world and my opinions about the world. So those are just a few of the skills that we've sort of highlighted are transferable once you've studied abroad and what you're thinking about um, when you're looking at graduate school. And again, I'm, I'm, woke, I'm curious to hear from you all if you have any other additional skills that you feel you gain from having gone abroad that we maybe haven't included in this list. So certainly feel free to type those up um, if you are compelled to do so. But in thinking about uh, graduate school applications um, and the transfer, the trans, the skills that you have that are transferable to uh, graduate school applications even, we want you to reflect on a couple of different things um, because we think it's really important for you to take some dedicated time and be honest with yourself about what your expectations are in your career, um, academically and personally as well. Um, so ask yourself, first of all, what do you want out of a graduate school experience? Um, and what would you like that graduate school to know about your experiences overseas? Um, whether you want to become a doctor, perhaps there was, let's say for example, you do wanna to go to medical school. Perhaps your ability to um, learn more about how different religions um, deal with health issues overseas and how that might impact whether you can have a physician who is of the same uh, gender as you, for example. There are li little unique uh, situations like that that perhaps having gone abroad gives you that additional cultural and insights to, to the way that problems are solved, right? Um, so really think through about what it is about um, your experiences overseas that make you a strong candidate for whatever graduate school or graduate degree that you're pursuing. What skills do you possess, right? So we, we shared with you a short list of eight skills that we feel um, are transferable, but perhaps there are others. Um, and how do you think having those skills makes you, again, a great candidate for a graduate school program? And finally, how will you articulate your global experiences in an interview? Um, Rebecca will go into this in a little more depth in the next section, but certainly we've all had people in our lives who've asked us, what was your study ex abroad experience like? And our answers can sometimes be, it was amazing. I loved it. It was great. And that's, that's a good answer, but it's maybe not enough, right, to kind of illustrate what exactly you gained from this experience. So really take your time um, and think and have some, some dedicated time to reflect on what you're looking for. And we think that that will really help you as you consider what makes um, a strong graduate school application. So before I pass it off to Rebecca to go into that in more depth, just a few reminders about what to think of uh, when you start to apply for graduate school. 
So number one, make sure you communicate the fact that you have global experiences. I've met quite a few students who don't include their study abroad experiences um, or even volunteer experiences on their resume, or they don't think of that as a, a great talking point to highlight as something that makes them stand out. But again, you are one of the 10% or less of students that have these, these experiences. So, so make sure that you find a way to highlight that opportunity. Um, identify real examples of challenges you had. So maybe there were uh, group projects you had to work on. Maybe you got lost on your way trying to find something. How did you problem solve uh, through those challenges? Um, and having real examples that you can draw from are a great way to, again, make that graduate school application stand out. And finally, try to look for uh, professors or other community programs on campus that you can tie into your global experiences. So whether that's a professor who taught you while you were overseas or a community program on your campus that is related to the field in which you'd want to work on, um, try to find those people and make those connections so you can make sure that you've explored all of the different ways you can, you can connect your international experiences to your graduate school applications. So with that, I'm going to pass it off to Rebecca, who will tell you a lot more in depth about what to do in order to make your graduate school application stand out. Great, thanks so much. Um, let's get into uh, some strategizing for your grad school application. Um, we can go on to the next slide here. Um, and here are a couple of things to be thinking about as far as how to really leverage your study abroad experience. And keep in mind that I am going to be talking from a, um, a lens of an admissions officer from an international affairs school. So simply the fact that you studied abroad might not make you stand out. Um, studying abroad is a thing that often um, motivates people to want to study international affairs in grad school. Uh, so you want to think about how can you take it farther beyond just showing that you had this experience, which is an awesome experience in and of itself. You can get more leverage out of it by thinking strategically about how it's relevant to this um, this application process. So one thing to think about is, are there some seeds of your motivation for going into a graduate program in international affairs that started in your study abroad experience? Um, so just a uh, um, experience from my own background. Um, I studied abroad in my sophomore year of college and I'm going to date myself here. Um, I went to South Africa and that was the second year of Nelson Mandela's presidency. Um, but also the first time I had been out of the country at the time I studied abroad. And um, so my first experience with being in an environment where race relations was both quite different than here and quite similar in a lot of ways. Um, what I found when I came back here was that I had a new understanding or a new perspective of race relations here in the US than I had been able to have by never having seen anything different. Um, and ultimately, although it wasn't right after undergrad, that really influenced my interest in studying conflict resolution. So um, one of the things that we look for um, as a school in our applicants is what kind of uniquenesses they bring to our program. So you might have lots of different ways that you're unique, um, but your study abroad experience could be one of those things. Um, and again, your the fact of studying abroad might not do it for you, but being able to be reflective and think about what you got from that experience and what kind of questions it raised for you, how it got you thinking differently about something that relates to what you wanna study, being able to talk about those things can be quite powerful. So again, thinking about how you can really leverage the experience. Another way that you can think about that, especially if you're a person who's thinking about applying to graduate school straight out of undergrad or shortly after, um, one of the things that you'll come up against is competing against people who have more real world experience than you do. Um, so professional experience and that sort of thing. And um, one way that you can highlight that you understand some of the themes that you might look at academically in, in the classroom um, is to connect those things to 
um, aspects of your study abroad experience uh, where you've seen how some of the challenges or the, uh, the conflicts that you've read about are coming to life for you. And so being able to talk about that can be a real asset, especially for someone who does not have a track record of professional experience yet. Um, and then Trixie already mentioned a number of different skills that you may have touched on or gained or improved during your study abroad experience and being able to talk about those, um, perhaps to put them on your resume, um, perhaps to talk about them in an informal conversation. I mean, there's a number of ways, and I'll get to that in a moment, of how you might um, highlight these. But do spend a little bit of time thinking about what are some skills that you uh, gained from that experience that relate to what you want to do in graduate school, whether it's the process of going through graduate school that they may have helped you with, like critical thinking skills, or if it's the field that you want to go into. Um, so, you know, public diplomacy, and you've got some cross-cultural experience from a, um, a study abroad experience. That can be really helpful as well. And then lastly, um, I think sometimes people feel like uh, it's all about the answers or the knowledge uh, when you're thinking about grad school, but actually I think the questions are so important. And so you might have found that uh, because of your experience studying abroad, you come back with a lot more questions than you had before. And that's a great thing. And so being able to identify what are the questions that have come up for you? How are they deeper than they were before? And are there some things that you've tapped into a little bit in some classes in undergrad, um, but that you realize through your study abroad experience require a lot more digging? And there are things that excite you about learning more and, and getting deeper into the research. And being able to articulate those in your application can be quite powerful as well. So on the next slide, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how you might be able to talk about the things that I've just mentioned. So where do they go in your application or where can you fit them into the overall application process? Um, one of the most significant places you can talk about them is in your statement of interest or statement of purpose, the essay that you're going to write to a graduate school to show why you want to join their program, why you want to get their degree. And the more concrete and specific you can be in this statement, the better. So you might have an anecdote from your study abroad experience that you want to include there where you can tie a link between the exposure you got to something that happened while you were studying abroad and where you'd like to take that further in a graduate program via research or learning more about organizations where you might intern or even if you've identified a professional path you'd like to, uh, to get on, um, this can be a place where you can talk about that. Um, a lot of times you have an opportunity to have a very different kind of relationship with a faculty member who is leading your study abroad program. Um, and if that's the case, that might be someone who knows you both inside and outside a classroom experience and also in um, how you sort of uh, were able to engage with some of these cross-cultural skills or other kinds of, um, of skills that you can build during that time. And so that could be a person who would be a key letter of recommendation writer for, for you in your grad school application. So that's another way to think about how to leverage that experience, not only from your own, um, your own voice, but from another voice as well. Your resume is another place where you can, of course, um, include this, but think again about not just including the fact that you studied abroad, but what are the key components that might um, lend themselves to a bullet point or two on your resume that you could add to show um, that this experience really ties into your motivation for graduate school. So that might be related to coursework you did, it might be related to experiential opportunities you had while you were there. Um, going back to my own experience, um, I had the opportunity to go to sit in on an early planning meeting of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa, and that really started my thinking around an interest in the world of conflict resolution. So. Um, you know, there's not a lot that I could say there on my resume about something that I did, but I could talk about having um, uh, been exposed to or, or having sat in on a meeting of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Um, so those are some things that you might do with your resume, um, not to mention the skills that we've talked about several times and how you might add them in here. 
And then um, if you have some anecdotes or stories from your study abroad experience, those might come up in a number of ways, not just in writing in your statement of interest. Um, but think about interaction that you have at the school where you're thinking about um, applying or where you are applying. There are not a whole lot of schools in this field that do interviews, but some do. And if that's the case, then you might want to have some anecdotes ready to go for that. Our school does not do interviews, but we do offer informational sessions. And those are largely meant to help us to help you answer questions or ask questions of us and for us to fill in the gaps of your knowledge about our program so that you have the information you need to create a strong application to identify the program that fits the best for you um, but you should think of it as a two-way conversation and we very much appreciate what we learn about an applicant in those informational sessions and where we can see an applicant has done quite a lot of thinking about how their past experience study abroad included relates to their interest and motivation for um, applying to one of our programs, that can have a pretty big impact as well informally. So um, you're better able to have um, a more powerful impact with those kinds of opportunities if you do some thinking about them ahead of time. So that's why I mentioned practicing here um, because uh, sometimes it can take quite a long time to figure out how to tell a story if we haven't tried to tell it before, especially if it's complex. And what you need to think about is a way to have a couple of quick stories where you don't need to go into too much background, but you can show the impact and the relationship between some experience you had and what you're aiming for with grad school. So with that being said, let me turn things over to um, Amy Marion, my colleague here, who is our International Programs Manager, and she can speak more in depth to some opportunities to study abroad at the graduate level, assuming that once you've had that experience at the undergrad level and you've gotten the bug, you'd like to continue down that path. So I'll turn it over to Amy here. Thank you, Becca, for the introduction. Um, yeah, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about how you can study abroad um, at the School of International Service and at American University as a graduate student. So um, we have a large portfolio of study abroad programs for graduate students, which is um, pretty unique um, at the graduate level. Um, we have about 20 semester abroad programs, so I'm sure many of you are familiar with semester abroad, since most of you, um, assuming most of you have studied abroad before. Um, so these are full-time opportunities um, for students to go abroad for a semester, so usually three or four months. Um, and these programs are focused um, in international relations schools abroad. However, I did want to point out that the study abroad opportunities are open to all students at American University at the graduate level. So maybe you're listening today and maybe uh, the School of International Service isn't necessarily where you're going to apply, um, but we do offer these programs to students um, at the graduate level across the campus. Um, so we have um, some really unique opportunities. Um, we have a program with a Peruvian Diplomatic Academy in Peru. Um, so that allows uh, graduate students at AU to study alongside um, uh, professionals um, studying to join the Peruvian Diplomatic Corps. Um, so similar to the Foreign Service here in the US. Uh, we have another program in Norway, which is at the New Norwegian University of Life Sciences. So that's um, a good fit for some of our students that are studying um, global environmental politics or other um, environmental programs. And those are just a couple of examples. I have a link up on the screen um, so you guys can look at some of the other programs that we have. But at the graduate level, we also offer a lot of unique opportunities for short-term study abroad um, and interning. So you can see we have um, interning opportunities and independent research abroad as well. Um, usually these are offered over the summer. Um, and you can get those practical skills um, that you can help market yourself upon completing graduate school. So we've been talking a lot about getting into graduate school, um, and now we're kind of talking more about some of the opportunities that you might have as a graduate student to incorporate additional international experience. Um, so I also wanted to touch on our practica programs, um, which are an opportunity for our students to complete a capstone requirement abroad. Um, and they're partnering with an SIS faculty member AU faculty member that has expertise in a particular region and uh, partnering with various organizations to do a consulting project. So for example, um, in the past, we've had programs um, travel for 
anywhere from one to three weeks over the summer uh, to Brazil with a faculty member focusing on land restoration, um, policies and economics, and completing a project and presenting that to a client. Um, we also had a program that went to Cuba that focused on education and diplomacy um, and furthering ties with the US and Cuba. Um, we had a program that went to India looking at public service delivery of water. Uh, and this summer we'll also have a couple of programs um, one heading to Sierra Leone looking at development partnerships and another one heading to Mexico that will be looking at U.S. and Mexico relations. Um, all of these programs short term with a faculty member um, and the, pra the practica programs are a really um, great opportunity to work as a team um, and also uh, have a tangible item to uh, articulate some of what you've learned through that program and talk to future employers. Um, and speak with other colleagues in your graduate program about what you learned and, and sharing that knowledge. Um, we also offer international dual degree options. So for those of you who maybe really want to, um, you know, continue that study abroad journey and perhaps study for up to a year um, abroad, we also offer um, programs in Asia and, and Korea and Japan currently and also in Costa Rica. And these programs you would spend one year here in the US and then you would spend one year at um, the partner school and in the end you would have a degree from American University and also a degree from the partner school. Um, so those are also really exciting opportunities offered uh, for graduate students. Um, for those of you who are interested in continuing on an international uh, journey and also being able to articulate some of the um, skills that Trixie was speaking about earlier um, throughout your graduate program and beyond. And lastly, I also wanted to touch on um, the travel support that we do offer for students who are pursuing some of these international opportunities. Uh, we do have grants that students are able to apply for um, that can support them doing internships abroad or independent research, um, practica programs. Um, I'm sure all of you have, as all of you have studied abroad, you understand that the cost um, can sometimes be uh, challenging, so we do recognize that as well, and we um, try our best to provide as much support as possible to make these programs accessible to all graduate uh, students at AU. Um, so that's a little overview of um, how you can study abroad if we happen to see you um, at American University uh, in the future. Um, so yeah, and I'm going to pass it over uh, to Trixie, and she's going to talk about next steps and additional resources. Thank you, Amy. So again, we're really excited to, that all of you have tuned in and hopefully throughout uh, today's webinar, you've gained a lot of practical advice and information about um, whether or not graduate school, um, not just only, not only uh, is a good fit for what's next, um, but that your global experiences um, are really added value to, to you as an applicant. Um, and so this is, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about our top five tips um, so what are the five major takeaways we hope you walk away with um, having um, tuned in today? So first, definitely reflect on those uh, skills that we highlighted previously, um, how your global experiences um, helped you enhance those goals if you possess them already, or how you further develop them, perhaps both hard and soft. Um, so hard skills sort of being the more tangible things like learning a foreign language and soft skills being the communication pieces. Um, and then next, explore your academic, personal, and professional goals. And how does going to graduate school help you achieve some of those? Um, so whether you want to pursue medicine, become a lawyer, um, what is it about uh, your international experiences that informed your ability to do those jobs even better? Um, then identify programs, mentors, or other resources that can help you up with the application process. So Rebecca talked through a lot of different great ways in which you can make your application stand out. Um, and if you can get feedback from trusted people um, and experts in the field to make your application even stronger, that's, that's even better. And I know Rebecca even mentioned, uh, you know, getting a letter of recommendation, for example. And so once you can build those relationships with people who can also help you through the application process. Um, that's another great way to give yourself an advantage. Um, and so again, walk through all of those different components of what makes a grad school application um, the best it possibly can be. And related to that, um, top num tip number five um, is focusing on your authentic story. Um, so you know, a lot of students are applying to graduate school every year. 
and applications are reviewed. And what we want to know is is more about you and, and why you would be a great fit for this program um, at this school. So really focus more on your story um, and don't worry too much about what others might be writing about in, in their own application um, to applications to graduate school. So with that, there are a few upcoming events we just wanted to have on your calendar. Um, and so I'll pass it back to both Carmen and to Rebecca, who will tell you a little bit about what you can potentially um, tune in to join them for. Thanks, Trixie. I wanted to invite everyone to join us on Wednesday, December 6th for our monthly webinar with best practices in applying to grad school. We'll walk you through some questions you can ask yourself to discern what program is the right fit for you, a 12-month process to put together the most competitive application possible, talk through some funding opportunities, and then offer some other insights and answer any questions you might have. It's not specific necessarily to international affairs programs, but we hope it's good advice regardless of the kind of master's program you're looking at. Great, and we have two upcoming events that I wanted to highlight along with a website where you can follow along to see what events come about um, as they get scheduled. So um, our faculty are always traveling um, and speaking in different cities and we have a faculty member, um, Nanette Levinson, who will be in Boston um, on December 9th. And so what our faculty do is just set up a time to just have coffee with um, interested prospective students in the area and you can uh, pick their brains a little bit about who they are and what they do. Um, you can learn more about that by emailing us at sisgrad at american.edu there. Um, or you can actually register directly with that link at the bottom of the page. So um, we also have a webinar coming up. So if you are thinking about or in the process of wanting to apply very shortly for the next season, next fall, um, where we have a deadline of January 15th for master's applications, we do a webinar periodically, but the next one coming up is December 13th on how to craft a competitive application. And so it's sort of taking some of the comments I made today about how to leverage your study abroad experience for a strong application to a broader level to think about all the components of your application, who you are, what you need to know about our application process and that sort of thing um, to help you put your best foot forward and create a really strong application. So. That and other ways to interact with us, such as the info sessions I mentioned, class visits and things like that, can all be found at the website at the bottom there, american.edu slash SIS slash visit. Thank you, Rebecca, and thank you, Carmen, for sharing those, those wonderful events. Hopefully you all can tune in. Um, and one thing I, I forgot to mention earlier, um, sort of tied to the next steps and, and resources and tips, is under the handouts tab on this GoToWebinar panel, there are two handouts there. You should be able to click on them and download them. So one of them is a flyer from Aptia, and another one is a couple of diversity abroad resources that can be really useful for you as you think through the graduate school application process. Um, and we'll, be, we'll make sure to also um, attach those to the recording that we'll send out to everybody who's registered. So I did wanna just make sure I took a moment to remind you all of that. Uh, we don't have that much time, so we, but we are able and willing to take a couple of questions if people have any. Um, so if you had any questions, please feel free to type those in to the chat box. And I'll definitely try to uh, pass those questions along to our wonderful co-presenters if you have any. Um, and in the meantime, um, I just want to put up the ways that you can connect with us at Diversity Abroad. Again, we are all over the web, so you can find us at diversityabroad.com as well as through all of our different social media channels. Um, and I do also want to put up the contact details for all of us as your presenters. So if you had any questions about the content that we've shared with you today, you can certainly uh, feel free to email any of us with those questions. Um, but I'll leave it on this slide for now. And then if you do have any questions in the next minute or so, certainly send them our way. It doesn't look like any are coming in. But again, you all have our contact information. 
and I'll be sending a recording of this webinar to you all shortly. Um, so if there are no final comments or questions, uh, thank you all so much for joining us for today's webinar. Thank you to Carmen at APSIA, Rebecca and Amy from the School of International Service for joining us. Um, we hope you all found this to be informative and helpful. And again, you can expect to receive a recording along with uh, some attachments for some, some useful resources for you as you consider applying to graduate school. So with that, thank you um, on behalf of all of the presenters. And we hope you join us for the next webinar that we have uh, in the new year. Uh, happy holidays, everyone. Thank you.